Hello folks, this is Keith German with CC Learning and I'm excited to bring you another quick tutorial. Uh, this one will focus specifically on the Jasper Active Moss online application that runs through the Microsoft 365 web apps as an add-in. So this is the anytime, anywhere access on any type device option for Jasper Active users wanting to learn Microsoft Office. Uh, now this video is going to go ahead and jump ahead and assume that this is a student learner that's wanting to get a feel for the application maybe before using it, that this student already has a Jasper Active account uh, and they even have already been shown by their instructor how to get to the Jasper Active Moss online application through office.com or through the Jasper Active student page. And that the student already has a course activation code and has applied that to activate their courses. Now today I'm going to demonstrate from the Word application, but as you see here on my screen, this could simply be a blank spreadsheet or a blank PowerPoint presentation as well, because those are the three application courses that we uh, provide. And we also have the Word Expert and the Excel Expert courses available too. Okay, so let's get started with this quick tutorial. Uh, first and foremost, notice that in my ribbon here in the top right, I already have the add-in loaded into my Microsoft 365 account, and therefore it's available for me to click to launch the Jasper Active Instruction Pane course uh, instruction pane. And you'll see that here on the right. Now, we this application follows our normal learning pathway. So students always begin with a benchmark. And if they are initially getting in here, then of course the check mark will not appear here. And then their lessons where they get guided instructional learning and they have the progress bar here. But of course, if they're just getting started, that will not appear uh, until they do produce some progress. Once they're done with their lesson exercises, we do still have the create project where they can try to apply what they've learned in a project type scenario for a grade. We do have the summary assessment. So this is post learning and we're just assessing what they know and still do not know maybe some areas for remediation. And then at any point in time, they always have access to the ebook, either through this menu option here or when they're within an exercise, they will have the ebook option available to them. That's just not available in things like the benchmark or the uh, summary assessment because those are true exams. I will point out before we get started here that there is a language option at the bottom. And we do have the ability to have English or Spanish, and that is now built out throughout uh, each of the courses. And then in a minute, I'll show you another feature that will afford your students the opportunity to learn in other languages using the integrated Microsoft Immersive Reader feature. Uh, now, in this case, I'm already a student. My instructor is already giving me my code. I've applied it. I've activated this course. If for any reason I need to move from one group to another or from one class to another, for whatever that reason is, then I could simply click this manage group key option here. And it simply will give me the option to put a new class group activation code in there, apply that. And then all of my course progress is always retained. I'm just simply moving that progress from one class, if you will, to another. But I'm gonna focus here today really on lessons. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the lessons thing here. Now, now in my login account right now, I've already begun a number of lessons. And you'll see here, there's a lot of nice information available to the students here. They, they know what is going on right now. They know what has not even been started. Now, if this were all done, if any lesson were done, it would actually say finish here. So there's three types of statuses that could potentially occur here. Uh, today, I'm gonna to focus on lesson one here. I'm gonna click ongoing. And then there are two types of exercises. I think most of you probably know that the Microsoft 365 web apps, as it is currently, are not as fully functional as the client installation version of Microsoft Office. So there are some missing commands. There is some missing functionality. 
And therefore, in order for us to cover all of the objectives and domains necessary to prepare a student for certification, we break out the lesson exercises in either in-app, which means the content within these exercises can in fact be done within this application, i.e. Microsoft 365, and all the functionality is there. But these three exercises down here are called interactive exercises. And that means some concepts that we need to teach here. Well, they can't all be done within the Microsoft 365 uh, applications and therefore we produce a video simulation of the client version of Microsoft Office and the, it is still kinesthetic hands-on learn by doing but it's a click through experience as opposed to actually using the full scaled application. I'm going to actually take time here in, a, in the next few minutes and actually show you both types of exercises. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we assume that the students will work top to bottom. We assume that they will start with lesson one. That is obviously controlled by the instructor on how they want the content to be delivered. So I'm gonna click exercise one here, learn to find text for further action. I always start off with an objective statement, which is always good from an instructor standpoint. If a student struggles reading or doesn't care to read this and wants it read to them, they can simply click the Immersive Reader icon. It will then launch the Microsoft Immersive Reader app within Jasper Active and read this content to them. They could also use that um, capability to change the language settings in Immersive Reader and have it read to them in a particular language. And certainly Microsoft has a lot more languages than just English and Spanish. So hopefully that will help with student accessibility. Once you're ready, I'm just going to click start. Notice that just like our other applications, especially our desktop one, we control the documents that they're gonna use the student working documents. So we automatically load that. Students aren't having to do that. Teachers aren't having to tell someone where to go to find a document. Uh, it's already loaded for them. Some exercises will say question one of one like this. Some might say one of three or one of four or one of six. So these are various tasks that have to be done. Okay, and then within each of these questions, there'll be different steps. So step one, step two, et cetera. So we give them some initial introduction here. Notice the ebook option is available and the immersive reader option is available. Now this right here is saying on the home tab in the paragraph group, click. Okay, so I'm on the home tab. Here's the paragraph group and it tells me to click the show hide button. Okay, and sure enough, I've done that. It says scroll through the document so you can see all the markings. And then I scroll down and I read my instructions. And it says on the home tab in the editing group. Okay, I find the editing group. There it is. And click the find button. Now I've done that. Now this may kind of panic a student uh, initially because guess what? Wait a minute, where are my instructions? Well, Microsoft 365 kind of controls some of the uh, look and feel of things and how things launch. And they happen to launch the search option, the find option on top of our instruction pane, but programmatically we have the ability to toggle between the two. So instructors, if you're watching this video, you will need to teach this concept to your students prior to them getting in there and beginning their learning. Okay, so I'm at the search bar, but I don't know what to do. I didn't go ahead and read ahead. So I'm gonna click this J icon to go back to Jasper Active. And it says here in the editing group, click find, which I did. It says in the search field type, Andrew and press enter. So I'm going to go back to the search thing. Notice I'm toggling. I'm going to type Andrew and press enter. Okay. I've done that. And apparently it has found something for me. So let's go on to the next instruction. Okay. And it tells me what it did. Gives me a little note and says, click the occurrences below the search field. All right, let's go back to search, click the occurrence. Okay. I've done that. Click in the document where the occurrence is to turn off the gray lines. Okay. So I'm going to click there to remove. Okay. I'm going to go back to the search bar and I'm going to remove it and it's gone. Okay. So I've done that. And then it says, go back to the search thing and type Nick and press enter. Press enter. Okay, obviously it found Nick. 
and it comes in here it says once you've done that then click now here's something you want to pay attention to it says close the search task pane notice it doesn't say the search it says the search task pane instructors again what a great example to teach your students about reading and following instructions which is exactly what they're going to have to do when they go to work for an employer and they're going to have that expectation of them so i'm going to click search and there's two x's here but it's talking about closing the search pane okay and i've done that and i'm going to hit submit and then i'm done now the reason it didn't grade yet is because this could have been question one or two one or three and it would if so it would have moved me on to one of, or it would have moved me on to two or three but i am done so i'm going to click finish and then as you know jazz Proto does all the grading for you and your students and in this case we did everything correctly and we got a green check mark if we had a red x here then we could simply go to the ebook to try to help with some reading remediation or we could click finish here and just simply go right back and launch the exercise and try it again to see if we could correct what we did wrong. So once they're done with these exercises, the in-app ones, then they move on to the interactive exercises. And so let's look and see what that looks like because it is very different. I'm going to launch an interactive exercise. Remember, I told you that this is a video. Okay. And the instruction pane occurs over here. So I'm going to click play. That's how you start the interactive exercises you obviously still get the objective statement we always want to start an exercise with an objective we click start and you heard hopefully you heard that click there like i said this is going to be a click through experience so it says here click the view tab okay so let's do that now i paused because i was talking and it says are you stuck and if so by the way if your student is stuck they could simply click check solution and we will offer them a video walkthrough of this exercise in this case i'm not stuck because so i'm going to click ignore but once i do that and that box goes away at any point in time at the top i can go up here to check solution and again they will get a video walkthrough of this exercise to help them but it says click view and it says click the navigation pane okay there it is now, I don't know if you noticed, but my cursor is an arrow right now. But did you notice that when I put it where it tells me to click, it changes from an arrow to a finger pointing hand? Let me show you what that looks like. The next one here says, click the new adventures heading in the navigation pane. Well, here's the navigation pane and right there. Did you see that? Now, if I wasn't following instructions well, I might come over here and try to click drive for and yet notice it's not a finger pointer. And matter of fact, I'm clicking right now and it's not doing anything because I'm clicking in the wrong area. So your students were told to, your instructions told them to click the new adventures heading. Now it's a finger pointing and I click it and sure enough, you heard that and now it worked. So we try to give them a visual indicator that they actually do have their mouse pointer in the right location. Now it says click the home button, home tab. And then notice that heading one, so it just says notice. It doesn't tell them to do anything. It just says notice it. Okay, now click in the backpacking in India heading in the navigation pane. There it is. Oh, see my hand. Okay. In the document, click the hyperlink below backpacking. And I come in here and I put my cursor on my, uh, oh, it said below backpacking. Okay, so let me put my, oh, there we go. Now I got a finger pointing. And you see me kind of emphasizing this. Okay, so I've done that. And on the home tab, in the styles group, there it is, click the more button. Well, if they don't know what the more button is, they can start moving their mouse around until, up oh, there it is. Okay, that must be the more button. And then I click heading three. And it changed my link. Now I click the undo button. And there it is. And I've done that. So I scroll down. And then it says click twice at the bottom right of the screen. So wait up, oh, there it is, that must be it. I click twice. <clears throat> and this says type this address. Well, you know what? And it does say click the line below. Excuse me, I gotta keep reading. It says click the line below the marketing. Okay, here's the marketing updates. Oh, my cursor changed again. Ah, there's the little hidden box there. And it says type this. Well, I don't like typing, so I'm gonna actually copy this. And I'm gonna go Control C and I'll paste in here, Control V and hit enter, like it says. And again, I don't like typing, so I'm gonna copy that and hit enter. Okay, I've done that. 
Now it says press control and click, okay, the Talano Adventures. I've done that and it launches that website. And then it says close the web browser. So I'm gonna click the X. Okay, gives you a tip. Again, we're always teaching. Click in the navigation pane search field. Here's my navigation pane. Here's my search field and type factors and press enter. Okay, I did that. In the document, click at the beginning of factors. Oh, there's my cursor changing again. I've done that. Click the insert tab. Click bookmark, there it is. Type factors and it says press enter and click add. It says click at the top portion of the scroll bar. So now we're gonna click at the top over here. It says click twice, which I did. Okay, and then click the home and click editing. Click find, go to bookmark, go to, and then X. Notice you don't have to hit submit. You don't have to hit finish. When you've completed the last task on the interactive exercises, you are done. And I, again, I got, I did good <laughs> and I finished it correctly. When you're done, you can hit finish and it takes you back to your exercise pane. So folks, that's what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to give you a few tips. Now, the last thing we're going to close out here is I'm going to take you to our Jasper Active How-To Video Series. Hopefully, you're already subscribed to that with the bell button. And I've got videos here, and I always sort by the most recent. So we've got some good videos that we've put in here lately. But two that I want you to see here is using the finger pointer feature in Jasper Active Moss Online. So instructors mostly right now. I encourage you to show this video to your students before they start using Jasper Active Online. Also, here's adding the immersive reader. And, and we do have this video here, but I will tell you that we have now built immersive reader into the application. So just to give you a taste of what that looks like, I'm going to hit, hit here. And right here, I don't like all that red. I don't like to read that. So I'm going to click the button. And there it is it's going to read every bit of that for me. If I want it read to me in another language, I can click the multi-line. I can then click the book icon. I can change my language to something else. I can say here on my document, and then I have the ability to go in there and have that read to me. Okay, so I just wanted you to see that, and you notice it's in Arabic now and you have that capability. So folks, I hope this helps someone. I hope this helps makes the experience a little more comfortable for your students and answers a number of um, kind of questions as you begin to get uh, started. If you need any help at all moving forward, don't hesitate to email our tech support team at help at jasperactive.com. Happy learning.